Our last service call was a call a customer thought their system was low on refrigerant because it wasn't heating properly. Uh, they woke up this morning at 67 degrees in their house. Uh, what we found when we got there was actually the, the auxiliary heat was not kicking on due to some failed heat sequencers. So we replaced those heat sequencers and everything was working fine, which brings me to uh, a pretty big issue. A lot of technicians, especially the younger technicians, don't understand how sequ heat sequencers work. Uh, they get really confused by them, even though they're, they're very basic, they're just like a contactor. All technicians know how a, a contactor works because they can see it. But when they can't see inside a heat sequencer or a relay, they get really confused about what's going on and, and how to diagnose it. When basically it's, you know, it's the same thing. It just works, it works a little different. Um, where a, a contact works off electromagnet and it, it's instant. A heat sequencer works off of heat and it takes a little time for it to open or close. And that's for, for staging, for timing. Uh, you want to stage your different banks of heat differently, your fan differently than you would, you know, a contactor. You want it to come on exactly whenever it calls. So on this heat sequencer here, this is it's a double stack. So down here on the bottom, you've got your what we call your coil. Uh, then you got one stage of heat here and, and one stage of heat or your fan or heat and fan both right here. So the way it works is if you pull this apart, of course there's little rods in there, which I'll get to those in a minute. So whenever you apply 24 volts in here, it actually heats up this little piece of metal here, which expands and when it expands, it causes these pins to drop a little bit, which then allows this portion right here, we'll put that in there. So typically your contact is gonna be held up. And then whenever that heats up and it drops, it closes right there, allowing a path to go across the two points here. Again, it's just like a contactor inside of there. It's just done a little bit different than a regular like a compressor contactor is done off of heat, but it does the same exact thing. Just like on a contactor, you got points in there. Those points, as you can see on this one, are very burnt, pitted, and that's what caused this one to fail. Uh, and the same thing whenever, whenever this piece of metal in here cools off, it, it, con it contracts and pops back up and opens that back up. So, so right here are the contacts, and as you can see, normally it's gonna be like that. You can see down in there at the contacts, the points, how they're all burnt up and pitted, just like a contactor will be. And that's what's caused that to go out. Down in here, you can see this is the little discus here. When 24 volts is applied, it heats that up, and as it heats up, that little piece of metal in there expands and actually concaves a little bit which causes these pins to drop just a little bit, causing that to make contact.